Okay. Good morning again. Good morning. Good morning. Today, as you all know, is the Africa's Day. And every year, each year, we, the Fundación Alternativas, Alternativas Foundation, commemorate it. We have invited, in this occasion, to the ambassadress of South Africa, Sanki Mfembi. South Africa is one of the most important countries at the continental level in Africa. And at the same time, South Africa is the Spain's um, largest market in sub-Saharan Africa. South Africa has taken profit from much international goodwill born of its overthrow of the apartheid regime. South Africa is a democracy. It's a democracy with a progressive constitution. We were talking about that. Uh, the ambassadors and myself before is a strong rule of law and an upper middle income economy. So South Africa is considered a relevant component of the so-called global South. But in some ways, there is more in common with the global north. For example, it has preferential access to European and EU United States markets. South Africa has ahead of it some capital challenges. They, these challenges was discussed recently in December in, at the elective conference uh, organized by um, African National Congress. I'd like to mention some of these challenges. For example, South Africa's transition towards a low carbon economy, social justice, economic growth and inclusivity, or for example, expanding South Africa's social security system, or the state of public services and employment. Now, 29 years after the country's democratic transition, South Africa envisages a new path for the country's development in line with the South African, the, the, the demands, the ambitions of the uh, South African people. Thank you again, ambassadors. You have now the floor. Thank you very much uh, for involving us in this event today. We appreciate it. I would like to start by saying that we are honored and delighted to visit this prestigious Alternativas Foundation to participate in this web webinar on South Africa and its relations with Africa, Spain, and the EU. Over the past few years, the world has changed dramatically. As we leave the COVID-19 pandemic behind, South Africans are responding with courage and resilience. We have benefited from a clear and stable macroeconomic framework, strong commodity prices, and a better than expected recovery. 
South Africa is also experiencing exponential growth in its middle class with rising disposable incomes over the past few decades. This has led to an affluent consumer base in a country also richly endowed with vast mineral resources and with a competitive advantage in the production of agricultural products like wine and fruits. At the same time, South Africa continues to be one of the three largest economies in Africa and remains one of the most sophisticated countries in Africa due to our modern infrastructure and our globally connected financial system. It's also the largest African investor in other African countries. However, in some respects, our economy continues to be influenced by the legacy of apartheid and many sectors in our society are calling for policies that will accelerate economic transformation to ensure that all these benefits reach the majority of the population. Sustained economic growth during the past 20 years has also led to an increasing energy and water demand in South Africa. To this end, over the past four years, our president has hosted several investment conferences focused on priority sectors that will drive economic growth in South Africa in the post COVID era. The focus areas have been energy security, manufacturing, agriculture, and agro-industry, as well as mining and mineral beneficiation. Mm -hmm. The South African government is presently going out of its way to engage with international partners to encourage foreign direct agent technology, training, mm -hmm. and skills transfer in these Africans. We know the mere spectators as changes sweep across the globe of habitants. In this time of rapid and constant change, South Africa believes that the need for economic interdependence amongst African nations is self-evident. Africa also continues to have a limited voice and constrained participation in the decision and policy-making institutions. My country believes that as Africans, we must engage in international relations and cooperation, but we must also do with a sense of purpose to effect change rather than to be affected by it. Spain and South Africa have enjoyed diplomatic relations since 1951, and this year marks the 72nd anniversary of these bilateral relations. The advent of democracy in South Africa, however, dramatically increased the levels of bilateral relations between the two countries. Since then, South Africa and Spain have become familiar and comfortable international partners, leading to an exponential increase in bilateral political consideration, consultations, and especially in trade and investment relations. As we face the challenge of ensuring an adequate energy and water supply for our citizens and businesses, to consolidate our internal growth and continental leadership. South Africa needs Spain's support in dealing with its energy and water supply limits. The companies in Spain's renewable energy and water management sectors are amongst the best in the world and their investment model, which is based on partnerships with local companies and entrepreneurs, also fits perfectly with the requirements laid down by the South African government. The European Union is South Africa's number one trade partner and South Africa is the EU's 14th highest trade partner, but its largest trade partner in Africa. The EU also represents the most significant source of foreign direct investment into South Africa. EU-based companies invest in a wide range of economic activities in the country, and have been a major contributor to South Africa's industrialization and transformation agenda. However, South Africa believes that there's a need to continue working towards the full implementation of the initial plan, plan to create a free trade area between the EU and South Africa, since this would mean a significant step forward in the South Africa-EU bilateral trade relations. South Africa also believes that an increase in 
EU, uh, uh, AU cooperation in other areas, especially concerning the political and security challenges on the African continent is required. We are all at present facing an unprecedented level of global instability with old challenges reappearing and new challenges creating global tensions that affect all of us. In this context, South Africa believes all its international relationships need to adapt to the dramatically changed post-pandemic international context and should lead to a more equal balance of benefits and responsibilities for all parties. South Africa believes that a long-term vision that pursues security, peace and sustainable and sustained economic development and prosperity for all, our citizens and our future generations is essential for deepening people to people relations and mutual understanding between nations. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much for inviting us on this platform. Thank you. Thank you, ambassadors. And now we are going to continue the our conversation. And I give the floor to Andrea Chamorro, coordination assistant of the Africa Annual Report of the Fundación Alternativas. Andrea, you have the floor. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you so much for your assistance on this special day. There are many topics about to discuss about South Africa and the Africa new and the Africa continent, but we have made a small selection. The first question will be about the bilateral relations between South Africa and Spain, because Spain considers South Africa as a priority partner in, in various fields. And the first question will be. What could be the future ways of commercial cooperation be between South Africa and Spain, Ms. Ambassador? Uh, Vivian, can you um, give me give us a, a highlights about these relations and the between South Africa and European Union? Oh, it's nice. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Sorry, I asked about the what could be the future ways of commercial cooperation between South Africa and Spain. Um, we, we, we already have some memo of understanding signed between Spain and South Africa on sports, on trade, and on uh, science and technology. And in the area of trade, we have really made advances, but we think that we need to have some more consultation on the issue of the CBAM, which is the carbon border adjustment mechanism, where is going to be important that the two countries uh, in the interest of development of prosperity and sustainable economic growth, we revisit the issue of Spain wishing to, from the 1st of October, 2023, wanting to require firms from Spain to report their CO2 uh, 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 emissions, carbon emissions. The problem here is that the requirement goes further to say countries importing into Spain and the EU in this context are going to have to maintain the standards stipulated in the carbon border adjustment mechanism. And the objective is to, by 2026, through this CBAM mechanism, get this decision and requirement effected, effected. And we think that it's going to kill our economies. We need to have a discussion around this issue. Also, because when the penalties come of between 20 and 30%, they will impact on countries that are importing into 
the EU. For an example, South Africa exports lots of steel to Europe. And if you are going to charge us because we won't be at the same pace of transition like Europe, then it's going to dis disorganize us and work against some of the pro programs and objectives that have already been stipulated by Spain. First, South Africa is an anchor country. It's a priority market. We want to advance trade to extend beyond the 150 companies that are operating in South Africa. Spain has confirmed commitment to the uh, 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 2021 Afri the Spain Africa Focus 2023 plan. Now, if we do this in the CBAM, we're working against those objectives. But we are also saying it's going to be important for us to look at the situation that gives us a win-win situation. Whilst we are addressing the issue of climate change, we are not denying that there's not climate change. It is a global concern to everybody, but let's look at this transition. And it has been qualified as it's supposed to be a just transition so that it does not destroy other economies that are still dependent on other products and commodities. But it's also going to be important to, to, to work more on a project that is already taking place, which is the, the Euro, the Euro Horizon project, South Africa and the EU on science and technology, where there's a deeper uh, 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 understanding and cooperation in looking at uh, issues of logistics and transport. And there's a uh, a commitment of 4.911 million, billion, I suppose, but around that million to support this project. And it's, it's going to be important for us to be able to work around those issues so that uh, we don't, in the process of wanting to achieve something, destroy something that was already there and it's a sustaining platform for other economies. And this also relates to us wanting to ask the EU in general, and in particular Spain as our host country to support us in some of the projects that impact on economic development in South Africa, but also on the African continent. One of those projects is the PICI, which is the presidential initiative championing, uh, uh, the, the presidential infrastructure championing initiative, which is chaired by President Ramaphosa, President of South Africa, which is trying to have some form of coordination and cooperation of regional projects and infrastructure to have a better impact at the regional and continental level so that there is better coordination and a unified move by the continent. And the second support we require from Spain and the EU in general is the issue of the PIDI, which is the Presidential Infrastructure Development initiative projects, which is a project also that is looking into infrastructure development. And why one is emphasizing on these two issues is because the support of the EU to Africa has been outside the scope of infrastructure. And we think in order to support what Spain is committed to, which is an alignment to the AU agenda of 2063, it's also to support us in these areas because even those programs, AU Agenda 2063 and the other two programs we've spoken about, a, a, a point to the direction of supporting our economy at the same time, addressing the issue which is economic, but manifests itself in terms of mobility, which is the issue of people leaving the continent, coming to Europe and sometimes into Spain because they are looking for better pastures. So the issue of economic prosperity comes back. And we're therefore saying supporting these programs to, 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 to trigger a better focus and management of these programs is going to be of benefit to all. But lastly, within this framework, very little will be achieved unless we're able to also support Africa in one of its most critical attempts, which has been going on for 20 years. And that is the issue of governance of the multilateral uh, institutions. Africa is constrained. Africa is part of the world. Africa is part of the UN. 
General mm-hmm. Assembly. Africa interacts with global institutions at the financial and political level. And therefore, unless there's a change of reform of the UN Security Council, we are not going to be able to achieve some of these objectives we've been talking about. Yeah, excuse me. If you don't mind, we, we have a question uh, regarding the African continent because South Africa has a very active foreign policy we ha- which has a very a great importance for the continent and the rest of the world. And our question is, from what perspective does South Africa face the challenge if, which face African continent? Um, South Africa has always been part of the African agenda through the AU and other institutions and structures. And therefore, like one has already mooted, the AU is saying it is time that there's reform of the UN Security Council so that Africa, which is a very important player in issues of peace and security and stability, is also able to contribute in a full manner. The UN Security Council is the institution uh, mostly privileged of the P5, France, UK, and Russia. And it's comprised out of the World War II experience, but the world have changed since. And that there are other realities and challenges impacting on global politics. It's important that it opens up and becomes democratic. And Africa has set up a team of 10 to lobby for regions and and institutions and and associations to to really support us in getting the Security Council to reform so that at least also from a continental level, we've got two permanent seats in the UN Security Council, but also get the benefit of having, because Africa is a big continent, five seats in the non-permanent category. So that we're also able to put in the experience and the contribution of dealing with this most critical issue that is stalling our progress in certain regions because of instability. But we also feel that that will bring in an element of democracy which doesn't exist currently. And the same privileges that are given to the P5 should also be allowed access if this decision is taken by the African representatives in the UN Security Council. The important issue here is that there'll be more transparency, there'll be more democracy, but there'll be a much wider participating on this critical issue, which at the end of the day impacts on economies. But it will also strengthen the desire for Africa to want to have a rules-based, governance, international governments of this of, of this uh, uh, multilateral institutions. So that there are also a, a, a tax base and there's better negotiations. Why we've spent 20 years just trying to lobby one issue is because there's no foundation for a, a rules-based tax to be discussed and negotiated. And, and, and what happens is that the the intergovernmental uh, uh, body that to look at what national countries uh, present at the UN, its only task is just to put together those those positions and 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 describe the the, 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 the convergent points of view and the divergent points of view. But it doesn't take us far in actually getting into the depth of dealing with how the UN Security Council has to be reformed. We've not even discussed the formula of the how. So it's very important and urgent that we move into that sector. Thank you so much. Uh, Vivian, do you want to add something? Yes, I want to add that um, uh, on a point of emphasis to say that the AU Africa Summit committed to about a uh, uh, couple of billions mm-hmm. uh, that is going to be afforded for access by African countries on a, develop, on a investment developmental basis. Yeah. That is the sitting of February Brussels 
Yeah, and we feel that we'd like to see that commitment follow through, but we also want to see the EU Global Gateway uh, plan of also adding onto that the 150 billion of investment for global investment, not to pass beyond the needs of, uh, not to pass over and ignore Africa. We want them to come in, support us, but the most important thing, we want the EU to get into supporting us in infrastructure development because already other, other countries like China through FOCAS, FOCAC, and Japan through TCAT, which decided on this issue as early as 1993, have moved ahead so that we avoid the, the narrative and the discourse of thinking that we are glued into cooperation with certain regions and not others. We are open. Africa is open to interact and trade with the whole world. But if other regions do not come in, we cannot be blamed. And therefore, we're saying here is an opportunity created by the summit, and there's going to be follow up in July and in September of this year by the ministerial joint session of the AU and the EU to follow through on decisions taken at the summit. And we think that this is one area that needs to look broader into issues of infrastructure support for Africa. We would appreciate really entry into that into that space. Thank you so much, Sally. We have a short time. And Vivian, if you want to give us some highlights about this event. Thank you so much. The highlight that, oh, sorry. Oh, don't worry, Ambassador. <laughs> Is it Vivian? What? Are you referring that question to Ambassador? It's Vivian's. It's Vivian's, OK. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ambassador. Um, thank you, Andrea, for um, inviting me to this uh, great event. Um, so the highlights I get from, from this event is that, um, well, we're having this conversation in a very important moment, like in a, I think in a time, time, timely moment, because as the ambassador stated, we are living in a reconfiguration of the international relations, right? And if South Africa has always been a key partner and an important global player, um, today um, the country is still gaining more and more weight um, into the side and the future of the um, global order. And um, so I think that the key highlights I can extract from, from this conversation and from the points that uh, the Mrs. Ambassador has uh, addressed is that the, the European Union has the capacity to, to accompany Africa into the, 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 like this new global configuration to accompany um, the, the Africa in repositioning itself in, into the global order and that South Africa is a key mediator in, in this process. Um, so on 1st July, Spain will start the presidency of the European uh, Council and um, the ambassador has uh, identified several challenges that are, that still uh, limit the the cooperation between EU and 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 South Africa so um the Spain could take this as a, an opportunity um to address them such as uh for example one of the key points will be addressing the the signature of the post Cotonou agreement um and um advancing on the um development of a new trade relations, which uh, focus more on an uh, opening um, or reducing uh, the trade um, tariffs and, and establishing this free market between um, um, South Africa and the EU. Also addressing the issues of climate change, which have been on the table uh, for decades uh, with uh, very big promises, but that still have not been accomplished yet. So it's another thing that could be unblocked during the presidency. Um, moreover, uh, strengthening the collaboration in peacekeeping efforts, South Africa is one of the key uh, peacekeeping um, actors in, in the continent, and one of the uh, priorities of the presidency will be the Sahel and also the Guinean Gulf, uh, in which um, the, the South Africa can also play a key role. And um, finally, uh, Spain could commit to start a conversation about the global reform, especially at the uh, Security Council, uh, but also the, the G20 and other institutions um, facilitating and, and being 
that actor that will facilitate the entrance of 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 uh, South Africa and and the, the African Union um, into the the um, the 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 decision making of of the global sphere, also with with better power. Um, building uh, uh, um, an international order that is more um, fair and in which there are less hierarchies, right? So I think that these are the key the key points that I have uh, got from from this conversation. I don't know if, if the ambassador agrees with me, agrees with me or or believe that there are another key points that should be um, um, highlighted. Um, but I hope that that this um, answers your question, Andrea. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. Sadly, we have to finish. It has been a wonderful experience having the ambassador on such an important day. Her contributions are very valuable to understand the reality of South Africa and the African continent. Many thanks to Vivian for her assistance and intervention. Its conclusion has given us an important perspective of the challenge and the opportunities of the continent. Thank you to all the people who have seen us on streaming and I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Today's Africa Day. We appreciate you interacting with us on this important day. 60th anniversary. Thank you very much. Thank you.